Hey Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here and today we're going to be talking a little bit about Old World. That's because there's a new DLC coming out for Old World called The Sacred and the Profane. By the time you see this video it should be available on Steam and anywhere else that the game is available. I think it might be on the Epic Game Store as well. Uh, some of you might have bought it there because I covered this game way, 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 way back in the day. Um, this video isn't sponsored, I just thought it was important for me to cover one of the few good 4X games when it gets a new expansion. Um, Soren Johnson, the lead designer of this game, actually off the top of my head, I'm not sure what his title is in Mohawk Studios, but he is probably the one of the bigger driving forces behind the game. There's also some, there's actually like a, a bunch of really experienced people working on the game, like Dale, and I forget a couple of the other guys. But Soren Johnson, uh, he was the creator of Civilization 4, designer? He was the designer of Civilization 4, I believe. Uh, Old World is a very interesting 4X game because it's extremely high quality comparatively to most 4X games. Most 4X games are pretty low quality in terms of their gameplay and their art. And if a 4X game has high quality gameplay, its art is probably bad. And if a 4X game has really high art, its gameplay is usually bad. It's kind of a weird thing. Like, it's very hard to make a good 4X game. There's like three of them that are good. Um, and I would say Old World is probably up there. I think it makes the list of the one of the best 4X games released in the last five years. And that is a very, very small list. Uh, there's, a, there's a few games on that. Um, I don't even know if Civ counts anymore because it's actually was released like six years ago. Rick, listen, we're, we're stalling for time. Um, so Old World is a character-driven antiquity focus. So it's focused on like the classical and the ancient era, like early medieval. Uh, 4X game, it's very, very focused on this sort of thing. Interactions between characters, using characters as heroes to lead troops, using them as governors, having randomized events, having stories unfold, um, exploring the map, having dynamic interactions between players, using events, you know, you might offend another leader, all that sort of stuff. It's a very, very interesting game. And so, uh, you know, basically it's a 4X game about building cities, exploring events with characters. And when I say events, these are like little pop-up things. They're like essentially random events that will pop up based on some criteria of the game. Like you might do something and that causes a thing to happen, right? You might declare war on a tribal, um, on a barbarian um, tribe. Or um, is it independent tribe? I'm not sure what the phrase in the game is. You might declare war on an independent tribe and then that tribe will send you a marriage offer for peace, which will allow you to get the independent tribe bloodline into your bloodline, which means all of your characters can now if you're able to hire the the tribal units as mercenaries, they can actually lead them as a general. So there's like, there's like there's a whole bunch of like interesting mechanics. And the whole game is like this, right? There's a whole bunch of interesting mechanics. Like your your family members can become head of the church of Judaism or Christianity or whatever form those churches take in the game because it's all it's all very free form and interesting and nebulous. And it's a really, really interesting game. Now, the interesting characters is only one of the reasons why Old World is worth playing. Uh, it's got interesting combat mechanics, right? Every unit has a specific ability or role. Uh, like range units, fairly obvious, they do damage at range, but they do damage the closer they are to, unless you get them a promotion that allows them to do full damage from maximum range. And then you have things like catapults, which do AOE damage. And then you've got battering rams, which are really good at attacking into urban environments. And then you've got like cavalry, which if the cavalry kills a unit, it can attack again. So you could set up with all your range units, like you could get all the enemy units really low on health and then have your cavalry unit just kill, 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 kill. You could kill like six units in one turn. It's a very interesting layers of combat mechanics there on top of like the RPG mechanics, like you can level up your troops, but your troops don't have a predictable level up tree, right? They roll four different promotions every time they level up and you have to pick one, which means not every troop is leveled up in exactly the same manner. They will have some commonalities, right? You're always going to have access to a couple of the promotions that you want, but you're going to have to kind of mix and match. You might have to specialize one warrior towards being really good at defending forests and mountains. And then you want to park him on a forest and mountain to hold that tile while your archers behind him pepper away at the enemy. There's also story events, tons of references to like stories from like Greek times, from Roman times. Uh, the game has like an amazing in-depth event and story system. Super would recommend it. Uh, and it also has like really, really crunchy city management, right? Where you have to build each and every single individual tile using builders. You have to put a farm here you have to put a barracks here uh, you don't build buildings you you physically build the city on the map which is like really fun and really crunchy and it has really interesting production mechanics you don't you don't just have production you have growth right and growth is used to make like your settlers and your workers and your missionaries but while you're building those things your city doesn't grow and similarly in order to build your military units you have to use your red production your training and while you're building military units that red production isn't going into your global pool which is used to 
give yourself more orders, which is like a really important game mechanic because the number of actions you can take in a turn is actually limited. But also training can be used to promote your units. So while you're constructing units, the quality of your general army is going down because you're not having access to as much training to promote units. So you can either, it kind of enforces a sort of natural quality versus quantity in the game. And then you also have civics, which are used to pass laws, but civics are also used to train specialist workers. So you like, you might build a farm and then in order to put a farmer on it, you actually have to do a city project. Um, and you really want people working as those things because if a citizen is sitting around without a job, he's eating food and not producing anything. So you have to kind of like think about how to manage all of these interesting city mechanics. And so that, that's if you don't know what Old World is. Now, the sacred and the profane basically extends the religious mechanics, which are my favorite part of the game, probably, purely because I just really like the thematic idea of like, oh, I found Judaism, I spread Judaism to all my cities, and then Christianity appears somewhere random in my empire, and now I have to deal with the conflict between Christianity and Judaism, and, I, and which one do I adopt, and which one has the right beliefs, and then what... What religion do my neighbors adopt? Maybe Zoroastrianism appears like in Persia and now their state religion is Zoroastrianism and I'm, you know, Christian and we don't get along anymore. There's just so many things like that in the game. There's so many beautiful interactions and this DLC just adds a lot to the whole religious side of the game, right? It gives a ton of events, like over 300 new events in a game that already has like 3,000 events. Um... It adds new characters, new clergy characters who can come to your empire and give you missions and give you bonuses and give you special tasks and all this sort of stuff. Um, new character traits, your character can develop in a new and interesting way. And that's really, really important because you actually, you don't you don't play the game as like an immortal god king. You play as a character. You are the king or the queen. And you get to choose how you develop your character. Do you level up this stat? Do you level up that stat? Do you take this action to piss off this person in exchange for getting this reward? You're constantly going to be making decisions with your king and getting new access to traits and new access to missions and new access to resources. That's all really interesting. It all comes with this DLC. Uh, there's also a few historical figures. This is stuff I don't necessarily care too much about, but like you've got hippo. Hippolyta, Hippolyta. There's like a few people like that, like Paul, the first apostle or whatever, or the first pope. I don't know exactly what he was. He was like an early Christian apostle or something. I can't remember off the top of my head. It's been a long time since I did religion class. Um, but yeah, this, you know, you can you can have actual historical figures show up in your game and they're just kind of like, it's really, really cool. Like it's very thematic and very fun. Um, you can have religious dissent. Like if you piss off a religion too much, they will cause you massive massive problems in your empire and they will you know they'll cause rebellions and dissent and you'll have negative events and you'll have to make decisions between like do I piss them off even more or do I try to appease them at the cost of some other resource or do I appease one religious group at the extent of another religious group and then you can have cults appear in your cities and initially cults are really cool because it's like oh minus 10% money but plus 20% growth that's like a trade-off I'm willing to make but then you get too many cults and then some negative events start happening and now you got to start thinking about like oh what am I going to do about all these cults that are in my city because now the religious head of Judaism he's having a little bit of a problem with the fertility cults that are running around in Persephone or whatever per Persopolis I don't remember the name of the Greek city um, but, but, you, but you get what I'm talking about there's a, there's a very interesting crunchy landscape of decisions and interactions and that's why I want to talk about Old World because I think this new expansion even though I've only played like maybe an hour of the new expansion Old World has consistently been updated over the last I want to say like year maybe eight months since the last DLC I don't remember exactly when it was uh, the game feels crunchier it feels better balanced um, when I first played Old World a few years ago the game had some very deep problems with the way the systems interacted it had like the fundamentals in like a pretty interesting place but things just felt wrong and now when I play old world things feel right so just that constant iteration that they've done have taken these systems that are very hard to get working together and now they work together really nicely I will say this like if you're new to the game it, it, it can be a little bit of a barrier to get into old world but if you're already into old world super 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 recommend this dlc the events that i saw so far i really really enjoyed i enjoyed the cult mechanic i would like to play and do more videos on this game um i would like to do a live stream of the game timing is going to be everything here very very crunched for time over the next few days and the next the last couple of weeks look my life has been a little bit chaotic lately i just don't have the time um but if you have been playing old world go ahead and leave a comment and, and then if you're interested in old world go ahead and down there and read the comments see what people are talking about old world i can't give you a really well fleshed out opinion on the dlc however i can tell you that the dlc is here and at the very least it looks really interesting 
And I didn't want to let this DLC pass by without me at least covering it in a passing manner. My hope is that I will get a video or a live stream out in the next week. So please do keep an eye out for that. I'm also going to suggest that the Yogg's cast do a armchair admirals on that. So check that out perhaps Monday the 20 something. 20, uh, 23rd of January we might be able to swing that we'll see how the lads feel about playing Old World yeah so Old World new expansion new DLC check it out I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time bye bye